paint in a junk journal gives me so much joy. When that colour hits the paper, it's uplifting. So whether it's filling a page, painting a snippet, it's paint that makes it so special. And personally, I will take any opportunity I can to splat paint on supplies on my pages. But when I started filling my journals about four years ago, it all felt a little bit daunting. A blank page was super scary. I didn't know which supplies to use. Or even if my projects that I share with you here on YouTube, whether I would simply get laughed at. I even considered buying supplies just to level up my game. Now, four years later, I have come to realise one key thing, that all of that fear is wasted energy. It's just a waste of time. I play with paint now with no regard for convention. If there are any rules, I ignore them. I experiment in every way I can and I splat my paint around and just have fun. So today I would like to share this passion with you and maybe a little bit about my journey, along with lots of tips and lots of project ideas to give you some inspiration and maybe a little bit more confidence. So this video is definitely for you if you're a beginner, but perhaps also if you're more advanced. I hope you'll Think about where you are, give yourself credit for where you've come from, and maybe decide where to go next. So it started quite well. You can see lots of lovely junk journals that I've made here. And I made the decision to put a little bit of paint down. In fact, I chose what's a bit more like a notebook. And although you can see here a bit of collage that I did mixed with paint, I'd started prior to this creating pages that look a little bit more like a bullet journal. And this is where I wanted to share one of my first tips. Wherever you are and whatever you're thinking of doing, just begin. Where you end up and what you do may not be where you start. I've definitely veered away from anything that's as structured as this, but I absolutely enjoyed creating these creative pages using a new palette of paint. And the palette that I bought is this little white knight's palette. I think there's about 12 pans in it. I was so excited to get it. It really set me off and put me moving forwards from a relatively low beginning. I added colours to each of the pages in a wash. And behind the scenes, I may not have shared this at the time, I pulled out book pages and I just put colour on each of these pieces of paper, just practising and loving, swirling around with the paint and playing with those pans. I did buy this one. It's a relatively cheap palette of paint from a local craft store, but I wouldn't really recommend it if you can go for something a bit better. And I also treated myself to Botanical Line Drawing, this book by Peggy Dean, because I felt that I needed a little bit of help and it's a really good book. I did share it in some of my earlier videos. It's good because for a beginner, it breaks down into steps, ways of basically creating a focal point for your collage pages. So I played, I pulled out those little junk journals and I started to put colour on the pages in any way that I could. And I really do suggest as a beginner, if you want to play with paint, that you just let your creativity go wild. Stamp on book pages, draw little focal points and have fun colouring them in. It's a great way for using up those little pieces of paper. I love using up bits of scrapbook paper and you can stamp multiple images at a time like this and then maybe cut them up and put them in your junk journal. This sheet is stamped and I added wash to it. I've used that for sticking on pages in this bundle of junk journals. What a collection I was building up. And then I moved on to really adding more interesting things to some of the ephemera that I was starting to make. So once you've had some fun laying colour down on your journal pages, why not add some colour to a book page or a pocket? So there's my stamped images using my White Knights palette. I love green. I love this little stamp. It's a LaBlanche stamp, 
pull out your other tools and have a play. And if you like embellishing your own ephemera, why not make some envelopes, stamp on those like I did here, and add a little bit of a focal point at the corner. You can paint those in as well. I must have been feeling brave and excited and creative, and I decided to keep going and filling my journals using that palette of paint. I didn't particularly have a theme, it didn't matter. I was just having fun. It got a little bit eclectic, as you can see here, but what a mixture, what a glorious set of colors. So much fun playing with putting paint on the pages. One of my favorite ways to use paint, and I, I do suggest this, is to create a bit of a journal spread. So fill a page, maybe tear a page out of a book, look at the colors in that image and stamp and paint on some of your scraps of paper and maybe paint on that too. And one way that I suggest using your paint is to create little focal points like this that are interactive, or maybe use a book or follow a YouTube video and colour in, paint in an image that you've drawn yourself. So pick an image that you like. I found this cactus. I've actually used it quite a few times on a number of journal spreads. And develop a bit of a technique for drawing and painting it, particularly drawing. This is really simple because it's just a matter of a few leaves at the top, pointy leaves, some tucked behind others as you can see there, and then some stripes on the pot and you can go for it with your paint. It's quick, which means you can produce a few and as your confidence grows, you can sit it on the ground, add a little bit of soil and some grass for it to sit on. And it's a great way of using up those scraps. I like to add it as a tuck spot, not just as a focal point. So you can use your images in lots of ways, make them interactive like that. One of the ways that I suggest you might develop your painting in your junk journals is to introduce paint to some of the ephemera that you make, ephemera for putting on your journal spreads. So an easy way to begin is to choose a large page, maybe from an encyclopedia like this, that is black and white, so has maybe some text and some black and white images. And you can mix up a light wash of violet and blue and add it as I'm doing here to an image that's all black and white. And it just creates something that has that old photo effect, but is something personal and special that you can then use to be the decorative element, the personal element in a pocket. So here I am just gluing down the sides of a, I think there's three openings to this pocket. And I've used this style of pocket many, many times in my journal spreads. Another tip I have is to look at eBay and see if you can find any secondhand supplies. I dug out some watercolour pencils here that I found on eBay. They're entirely pencil, there's no wood around them, they're very interesting. But I love them because you can experiment and blend the colours very, very easily and also mix them up with those paints so you don't need to stick to just one medium. Just have fun with whatever supplies you have. By this time, my confidence was growing and I had loads of creative ideas just swirling around in my head. So I carried on filling journal pages, ripping up beautiful books that you can see there. That's a Victorian flower album in the background by Henry Terry. And I used the pages, as you can see here, those beautiful colors to enhance journal spreads. I put complementary greens and purples on the back of that particular spread and I used colours from the same Little White Knights palette to embellish and decorate quite a few elements. Here you can see a, an early form of my pre-made journal pages and I put washes in different colours on tags. I ripped out elements from book pages and stuck those on. I did faux stitching but I think I brought the whole thing together. It sort of marries up as one total piece when you add that watercolour paint. I really like this spread here. It's got a, a lovely little bird on the right hand side on that pocket there. If you're feeling a little bit more ambitious or 
you feel that you've built your confidence and you want to just have a play with a few different techniques, you could do a little bit of dotting to create flowers using gouache paint. You could get creative and confident with your swipes of green paint, make those leaves. You can bring it all together with lovely pieces of paper and just get lost in the fun of playing with paper and paint together. Here I've created an interactive element on the left and I moved on to creating a page with a maybe a more relaxed style of painting. So drawing these nice branches and leaves with a black gel pen and then using a very dilute form of paint that's a bit more impressionistic. It's just dabbing over each of those leaves. So to bring your paint into a junk journal, just feel comfortable having an experiment. It's all about playing. Here I'm just rolling the brush over the leaves. The pen is one that doesn't run. I think I did have a play with pens that ran and I quite like the effect of that too. So trial and error will tell you what you like, what you don't like and, and how all of these different supplies work together. I think I was starting to use colour in more pleasing ways and I also felt like playing with neutrals. So I created a page, again quite relaxing, to just see how much I enjoyed creating a page with, do with doodles. So again in the same junk journal I created a spread with some mattes of neutral colours and I just took a pen and did some doodles on top and I brought it all together with some complementary pieces of scrapbook paper. I think it's incredibly satisfying as these pages come together. Use your own handwriting as well as your paints and your pens and just relax and have fun. If you like to get a little bit looser with your painting, you can take your watercolour paint and just daub some areas of paint on a piece of card. Here I was doing it with the intention of creating a sort of poppy style trio of flowers. Very, very pretty colours. I think this was around the November time. And you can have a go at scratching some impressionistic style flowers in a pen on top of those blobs and just use that on a journal spread as well. I think at this stage I was I was feeling quite good. I loved the effect and I loved filling my junk journals and I was introducing extra elements as well like the washi tape that you can see here. Build it up slowly. Maybe don't try to do too much and certainly don't criticize yourself as you go. Here we've got a seasonal spread, something that's a bit more autumnal and again doodle style leaves in a trio there sitting on some lovely green and orange mats. I finished it all off with a little bit more writing and I think I added a, an envelope, a handmade envelope too. Do you ever have days when filling your journal, thinking of what to put in a spread is just a little bit of a challenge? So my suggestion and what I do is I just walk outside and I take pictures of little fungi, of leaves, of the trees. I'm lucky that I live with all of that around me and I, I use that to decorate pages like the one that you can see here. And then three things happened which seemed to change all of this. I was building up my supplies, I was gifted quite a lot and I love them. You know I love my Arteza paint. My channel was growing, it was doing quite well, but I started to put pressure on myself. And I'm sharing this because I think an awareness of what you're doing and why you're doing it and indeed who you're doing it for is really important as we play with our paint and bring it into our journals. I decided I needed to do, and I say needed quite intentionally, to create a monthly spread. So in November I created this wash painted image and in the next month I did this little teardrop, quite pretty. I did some collage and I did have some fun, but I'm not sure why I was doing it. It was not necessarily for me. And then something else happened and I made it worse. I made it worse for myself. I started really watching intensely other videos here on YouTube, CC Creations, Shader Campbell, and it elevated the pressure. 
And to be frank, it made me feel worse. Yes, I had fun painting these houses. I did them with gouache and I think they're really pretty. But were they me? They were definitely inspired by Creation CC and I, I like the finished result. I really love this flower. I did it with Inconic pens from Arteza and the colours were something different. I got to use my watercolour pencils. But was it what I wanted to do? So I took a step back to think about where I was, what I was doing and particularly why I was doing it and why I was pushing myself in this direction. What was really incredible, really amazing was the lovely feedback that I got here on my YouTube channel from all of you helping me to raise my own confidence level and maybe take some decisions about going in a different direction. And that's exactly what I did and what you can see here. I created an altered book so I took a book, a regular book, and I added gesso to the pages and then I added some little mats of paper and some paint and then I used those pages as the background for some spreads. It was my way of making quite a fundamental change in direction away from that higher skilled artist approach that I've been adopting. These are some journal cards that I had fun creating with a liberal splosh of green paint for the leaves and here you can see a bunch of tags that got a bit more green paint treatment too. I was having a lot more fun by doing exactly what I wanted. I added splats of paint to these collage strips and I, I started to find what I thought was my own space. Really enjoying getting a little bit scrappy and creative, building up supplies that had paint in them but doing things very much in my own way. Here you can see a whole bunch of pre-made journal pages that I loved putting together, bringing paint onto the page but adding collage as well. I've recently dyed papers with paint, so acrylic paint to add this beautiful effect and of course I continue to make junk journals and bring my paint onto the pages in very many ways. I've been filling them with spreads that I really enjoy and I've been joining in with collaborations like Junk Journal January and Junk Journal July, which means I end up with filled journals that I have to confess are filling the shelf above my desk. If you'd like to join this happy family where we make and fill junk journals and of course use lots of different types of paint, then hit the subscribe button and come back every week and check out this video here where I make and then decorate a junk journal and I hope to see you soon.